Today, I'm flying one of the world's longest flights for 24 hours from Australia all the way to London. I'm in the best first class suite on board and I'll show you exactly what it's like from how I sleep, the fine dining and even the upstairs in-flight lounge. This doesn't come cheap though, starting at over $10,000 but today you're joining me on this iconic 11,000 mile journey across the world. With that, let's pick up our story in Sydney, Australia. Well, good day and welcome back to the channel. It's a sunny afternoon here in Sydney where our journey across the world begins. We won't be needing the economy check-in or for that matter business. No, today we're trying out first class. First passengers get a private area where check-in formalities take place efficiently and discreetly. This flight is a very special one, designated QF1. The history of the Qantas Kangaroo route goes back to 1947, then on a Lockheed Constellation with six stops taking 93 hours. Improvements happened rapidly over the following decades, and by the 1970s, this had dropped to just two stops of Singapore and Bahrain on the iconic Boeing 747. Today, the A380 flies this with one brief tech stop in Singapore with a journey time of around 24 hours. With my tickets issued, let's head through security, which usefully has a designated first and business class fast track. Officially stamped out, first port of call is duty free. And no, not for the booze, but for something equally as good. Of course, Tim Tams, my girlfriend Millie. Well, and me, of course. Next, let's head to the lounge. The Qantas First Class Sanctuary is located just one level up from Duty Free. You can access this either by flying first class or by being an Emerald member of the One World Frequent Flyer program. The lounge is a great mix of contemporary and heritage design, from the old school split flap departures board to the open and airy dining room. Naturally, we're heading here first and foremost. Offering fabulous views of the apron and runway, this is up there as an Avgeek favourite. Let's take a look at the menu then. It's extensive and you could certainly have a substantial meal before flying. Let's start with a delicious glass of Pomeray Champagne. Retailing at around $50 a bottle, it's a half decent offering in the lounge. So what have I ordered off the menu? I've gone for the salt and pepper squid with a green chili dipping sauce. It's delicious though not overly filling as I want to save my appetite for the onboard dining. Before we head to the gate, let's take a quick look around the rest of the lounge facilities. There's a library, spa with complimentary treatments for first class passengers, office space and various help yourself drink stations. I think we have just a few minutes to crack open an ice cold DC and I can also spot our aircraft for today's flight, the Airbus A380 at gate 9. With boarding about to commence, let's head down to the gate. I'm escorted down the jet bridge by one of the lovely gate agents. It's at this point we get our first up close look at our mammoth Airbus A380. This 14 year old aircraft is certainly no stranger to the 11,000 mile Sydney to London route, completing it multiple times a week. With that, let's head down the jet bridge and just before we get on board this incredible first class, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Opera Desktop. Opera Desktop looks to the future, creating an elevated singular browsing experience with unique features like ad block, integrated messengers, a free VPN and more. However, one of my favourite features is the introduction of generative AI services such as ChatGPT and ChatSonic, available directly in the Opera sidebar, ready to answer your queries anytime. Personally, I love of the AI prompt button, integrated directly into your browser session. Yes, I too am excited about Project Sunrise. If you download Opera Browser from the link under this video, you'll get AI prompts on by default and ChatGPT and ChatSonic already in your browser. Though it's not just technology, Opera allows you to personalize your browsing experience from wallpapers such as these animated ones. I'm a big fan of the pinboards feature. In fact, this is one I use all the time, my cheat sheet for flying in first class. It ties together all all the resources I regularly use and check to fly up front. I've shared this down below so you can access this when you download Opera Desktop today using my link in the description. Here we go then, Qantas First Class. It's a bright and airy cabin despite being quite a high density. 
Let's stow my luggage in the overhead bin and settle into my seat, 3 Alpha, on the left hand side of the aircraft. Within no time at all, I'm served a pre-departure beverage, a glass of delicious 2005 vintage Pomeray champagne. It's of course absolutely delicious, with complex floral notes and aromas of roasted hazelnut and vanilla. Or at least that's what I read because I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's punchy stuff though at $250 a bottle. I'm served some canapes too, a caviar tartlet with cauliflower cream. I think this may be a premature record for near completion of the TT bingo card today. We begin to push back, so it's time to get my seatbelt on as the safety video is run. As we take a journey through 100 years of innovation and Australian spirit, welcome to Qantas. If oxygen is required, a mask will drop from above. Put it on quickly and tighten the strap. It's just beginning to dawn on me the length of this flight, but more so that I'm incredibly lucky to be up front for this experience. I've done nearly 24 hours in economy before now, and it's certainly one gruelling experience. Today will be different, that's for sure. With that, we hurtle down the runway and off into the New South Wales mid-afternoon sunshine. As mentioned, this flight will have a tech stop en route as we fly the first 4,000 miles over to Singapore. As we reach altitude, let's get my seatbelt off and get comfortable. The suite is pretty flexible in seating arrangement, meaning I can change to face the window at the touch of a button. For further elevated comfort, let's boot the Tims off and get the provided Qantas slippers on. I'm promptly served another vintage Pomeray champagne, along with some warmed mixed nuts. Service so far has been absolutely on point, but we all know the real test is when food service begins. A menu has been left at my seat for perusal, though I'm a little disappointed at how flimsy this is as opposed to a card or leather bound folder such as on Singapore Airlines or Emirates. Any disappointment though promptly evaporates, with a delicious selection of appetizers and main courses to choose from. Let me know what you'd go for down below. With my order placed, let's take a proper look around. We're currently located here, at the front of this Airbus A380 aircraft. There's room for a total of 485 passengers, split between the upper deck of business class and premium economy seats, and the main deck with room for 341 passengers in economy class, and of course, our cabin of 14 first class suites. I'd advise choosing a suite on the left hand side of the aircraft for additional privacy and quietness. For example, just look how exposed the middle suite is here. 3 Alpha is my pick as you're away from the galley and any restroom noise. The suite is spacious with a comfortable fully adjustable armchair which even has this wonderful massage function. There's also a buddy seat which can be used for couple dining, though I'm dubious as to how comfortable this would be in practice. I'm delighted to see individual air vents which certainly helps with your comfort on these ultra long haul journeys. Initially I was concerned at how exposed you are to your neighbour, but after takeoff, this privacy screen raises, which gives an illusion at least of separation. Right, I make it time for dinner. The tray table is deployed at the touch of a button and extends as so. The lovely FA promptly sets out my table, ready for my appetizer. I'm disappointed to find no caviar service in the sky, but I guess I've already had my allotted intake in this video. However, the promise of this delicious looking fresh bread seems to immediately quash my caviar aspirations. To begin, I've opted for the pan fried gnocchi with asparagus, prawns, brown butter and parmesan. This is a true melt in your mouth indulgence, going down an absolute treat. Naturally, I have to keep up appearances, so I've gone for the medium rare steak with green beans, a rich mac and cheese, and Neil's barbecue sauce. I've since found out Neil is a famous Australian chef. There's me thinking he's one of the flight attendants. I'm happy to confirm the beef is cooked to perfection, not an easy task at 35,000 feet. To close off the gluttony, I've gone for the raspberry and blackberry summer pudding with a creme fraiche. It's really very enjoyable indeed. Next up, I'm recommended a ginger spice tea with honey to relax post dinner. I'd never ordinarily order something like this, but given the smell already, I know it's a drink I'm definitely going to enjoy. 
Just before the all important taste test, let's get the in flight entertainment set up for a movie. Your IFE remote is stowed neatly in your armrest and is released as so. Unfortunately, it appears completely unresponsive. Not to worry though, these are touchscreens after all. Oh, and of course, we've got to put the seat into relax mode. So I can confirm the ginger tea is a new favourite and I'm sure you'll be adding this to your future bingo cards. Two hours later. Well, quite abruptly it seems, we've arrived into Singapore. Where did these last few hours go? However, they do sell tickets independently from Sydney to Singapore and Singapore to London, so in this case, we'll need to get off the plane for just over an hour. This does mean we have some time to spare in Singapore's incredible Changi Airport. Of course, there's only one thing I really want to go on the hunt for, the Qantas First Class Lounge. Thankfully, it's not too hard to locate. And whilst there's a whole host of features, I want one basic luxury first and foremost, a shower. Now feeling a million bucks, let's go check out the rest of the lounge. There's a dining room, and whilst I'm not planning to eat at present, we'll take a glance at the menu. There is one thing I could do with though, of course, an ice cold DC. Not wanting to miss the second and even longer sector of our flight, let's hot foot it back to the gate. Here she is then, refuelled and ready for the next 14 hours over to London. Let's head down the jet bridge and get back on board. Well, doesn't this seem like deja vu? It would be a crime not to have a drop more of the 2005 Pomeray. I mean, if anything, it will help with the jet lag, I'm told. It's not long before we begin to push back from stand, so it's time to get my seatbelt on as the safety video begins to run. A mask will drop from above. Put it on quickly and tighten the strap. Oxygen will flow as you take a breath. Fit your own mask first and then help others. This next longer leg will take us some 14 hours and 7,000 miles all the way to London. Now we must really check out the party piece on board, the onboard lounge. This isn't quite the Emirates lounge which you'll find on its A380s and rather than being located at the larger rear space of the upper deck, it's actually at the ferry front by business class. It's totally deserted, so I'll sit back and enjoy a sparkling water whilst perusing and ordering from the dinner menu. A few minutes later. Back at my seat, I'm served, well, you probably guessed it by now, more steak. I just couldn't help try for um, research purposes, of course. I think it's finally time for some sleep, so let's change into my provided Qantas pyjamas. There are two first class restrooms located at the very front of the cabin. It's a clean and practical space, albeit a little small. There are ample amenities provided, either in the bathroom itself or in your provided amenity kit. I'm delighted to find my suite has been turned down into a bed during my absence. How inviting does this look? Qantas used the Australian luxury bedding firm Sheridan, which I find to be of excellent quality. You get a particularly comfy mattress topper, one that you just sink into. Perfect. Good night, I'll catch you all in the morning. The next day. I slept for a solid nine hours, perhaps the longest I've slept on a plane before. Given the flight timings, whilst it's morning over Europe now, it's still around 3am local time. But that's okay for brekkie, right? Of course, let's begin with a freshly made cappuccino. 
for that obligatory caffeine hit as my table is set. Now I've just got to start with some Vegemite, a personal favourite of mine. It's Vegemite, tastes like Australia. It's similar to what we get in the UK, known as Marmite. To describe it, it's what's left over after you make beer. So brewer's yeast extract combined with vegetable and spice additives. It's also pretty salty. I know I'm not exactly selling it here, but it's an Aussie staple which I absolutely love. For breakfast main, yep that's a thing today, I go for the buttermilk pancakes with the walnut yoghurt. This is absolutely delicious. Judging by the flight map, we only have a short amount of time left until landing, so let's go and change back into my clothes and freshen up. Next step is to get those Tims back on and return my seat to the landing position. I still can't believe that 24 hours of flying has come to an end just like that and with it my experience of trying the iconic kangaroo route QF1. So how much did I pay for this experience? Well, I'm not going to lie, it's expensive. However, if you instead depart from Auckland, where I was previously anyway, it's possible to pick up this ticket for a slightly more palatable but still expensive $5,000. Anyway, welcome to London. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all again next time. <laughs>